Bolt is the most mind-blowing AI tool I have ever seen. This is Bolt in action, literally coding up an entire app that lets me interact with Paul Graham's essays one by one. This app isn't just a demo, it's not just a Figma mock, it is actually working. I have zero affiliation with Bolt. This is just incredibly cool. And so I wanted to show you how I did this using Bolt, Supabase, Airtable, and WhaleSync. But mainly, this is just fully AI. Anyone in the world can go to pgsays.com and actually use this app that was built entirely by AI. The app I built with Bolt is called pgessays.com. And like I mentioned before, it lets you see all of Paul Graham's essays, click them to open up the actual essay, and keep track of the ones you've read or the ones you've bookmarked here in the app, right? So it makes it easy to just read through all of his essays. This app in Bolt, again, took me like three, four hours to build. And it was really just a lot of back and forth, like going back and forth with a developer or a designer. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create an app just like this. And it's gonna look a little different because the AI again has kind of a mind of its own. It has a little bit of its own designs, um, but you'll see basically more or less how you can build something that acts and behaves just like this app. To create a new project in Bolt is crazy easy. Literally, it's just a chat window and it's gonna ask how you wanna help. So let's try that out. Here, let's say I want to build a full stack SaaS app uh, that lets users keep track of all of Paul Graham's essays and whether or not they have read them. Now, I could stop there with just this very open-ended prompt, but in general with these AI tools and Bolt specifically, you wanna break this down as small and as simple as you can, right? The more you kind of give it a lot of room to run, the more error you know, possibilities that come about. So here, let's say, let's start by building a SaaS dashboard that has a left-hand nav bar and a main section that lists uh, all of, or we'll say maybe 20 of Paul Graham's essays and links to their pages. So you'll give Bolt that initial prompt and Bolt will literally talk to you. Again, like a real developer designer would. It's going to break down what you've said into a set of steps and start to code this all out on the right side. So throughout this video, there's gonna be a lot of AI coding and we'll, we'll speed up some of it because they don't need to necessarily watch each time. But just understand what the process is like, which is you talk to it, it writes the code in front of your eyes, and once it's done, it shows you what it did with a little preview. So let's see what that first version is. And there we go. This is actually already not bad at all, right? Like literally left-hand sidebar, we've got this uh, list of essays. It didn't do 20, it looks like it did four, but we can open this up and go full screen. I can mark them as checked. It seems to just not save it and go away, but like this is a great starting point. So now let's start to uh, fiddle with that a little bit, right? This whole process is just going back and forth and telling it what you want to be improved or changed. So let's say a couple things. First of all, um, when I click on the check mark, it should save the fact that I've read the essay. Above the list of essays, let's keep track of how many essays have been read and out of the number of essays in total. So step-by-step, step, basically I'll go through and add different bits of functionality like this, right? So we wanna build out, first of all, just kind of the UI, make sure that A, it looks good, but it actually does what we want it to do. So here again, let's see how it did. And look at that, we've got a progress bar. If I hit this check mark, look at that. I mean, how, let, let's just pause for a second. How unbelievably crazy is that? I gave it two or three prompts and now we've got a UI that is working. Um, that took what, two minutes, five minutes? In real life, <laughs> this would have taken half an hour, an hour. Um, so that that's pretty unbelievable. Uh, now let's just like tweak the, the UI a little bit, right? So there's not enough spacing here, right? So let's give this a little space and say something like the main section doesn't have enough left-hand padding between it and the left-hand nav bar. 
And maybe I'll say also like something like, let's uh, hide the profile button for now in the left-hand nav bar, right? We can do a couple things at once. It's, uh, it's actually okay at taking uh, multiple directions and, and doing them all in one step. Uh, what you don't want to do is give it ambiguous instructions, but as long as they're specific, if you give it two or three, it can usually handle it. Now, this is a really good thing to notice as well. A lot of times the first attempt that it takes will create a bug. Sometimes that bug is obvious like this one, sometimes it's not, but either way, it will show that problem right here. And all you have to do is hit attempt fix and Bolt will give it a shot to fix the problem it just created. Now, Bolt is not perfect. It will sometimes, like here, let's see, it says it fixed it. Let's find out if it actually did. Nope, sometimes it doesn't. But if you literally click attempt fix, sometimes like three or four times, uh, it will actually try different things and get better. And there we go, look at that. Took me twice and now Bolt just works. This got rid of that uh, uh, you know, profile and there it is, the extra spacing here. That looks good. Now, I actually didn't want to get rid of the profile at the bottom. I probably should have specified that, but you know, that's the type of thing that happens when you're not um, super specific. But like, this is pretty amazing uh, that this is working, like just like that. So what we've built so far is a really nice prototype that shows what this front end can look like, right? So as I click around and hit, you know, let's say these two check boxes, uh, this works, but if I refresh the page, it actually isn't saved, right? Because it's just a front end. There's no actual database or back end to this. What's amazing is that Bolt doesn't stop here. You can actually use Bolt to build a back end and build a full stack app. And the way that they do that is through a, an integration with Superbase. So if you're not familiar, Superbase is a database tool that lets you basically spin up super scalable Postgres databases in a really easy, kind of user-friendly, almost non-technical way. Uh, and Bolt, is just integrated with it. All I have to do is hit connect to Superbase. It will ask me to sign in to Superbase using API keys. That looks great. And if I literally, if I don't even have an org, I don't have to set anything up at all. I can create an organization all through Bolt. It literally is just walking me through this entire process for someone that maybe hasn't been technical or used the database, right? Just click, 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 all good to go. And what Bolt's doing is essentially setting up a database for my app right? It's connecting here. And in a few more seconds, this connection will be established and we can go back over to Bolt. So there we go. So now we're sending it, creating a project and this can take about five minutes. So I'm going to pause. We'll let this run and pick this up in one second. And there we go. So this is telling me that it wasn't able to connect to Superbase. It actually was. And these are the types of things with Bolt that sometimes you'll just need to kind of work with it, right, and ask it a question. But uh, this is done, it says view project. If I click it, it'll show us our project. It went into the uh, Superbase and set up a database for us that we can now start to work with. Again, in a old world, I'd have to think about how I want this database to work. I uh, think about the tables, right? Like, don't have to worry about any of it. You can literally just come back to Bolt and now we can start to build this out. So we can say, um, create, the necessary databases, or sorry, database tables and fields in Superbase for me that will work for my app. It should keep track of essays and whether or not they have been read by users. Cool. So now that we've built the front end, Bolt is going to go ahead and build this back end for me. So you can see it writing SQL if you're familiar with that, but it's essentially just going to set up these, the database tables that I need. And there we go. Look at this. It's telling me about that. For it to actually run it, it makes you accept it. So I'll apply those changes and now it will run that Superbase migration. So if I go back over to Superbase this time and refresh, Already we've got essays and user readings. And look at that, like those are the three essays there. How cool is that? Now let's uh, do one more bit here to turn this into a real app, which is we'll need to add auth. So auth is how a user actually comes to your app and signs in, right? How they create an account. And this is one of those kind of bane of your existence type features that was always something you'd have to build, but not really unique and special. Uh, now that can be done like this. You literally go into Bolt and say, add 
auth so users can create accounts and sign in. Uh, for each user, we want to separately track the essays that they have read. And once again, this should start to get familiar. Bolt will go off. It will listen to what I told it to do. It will go through and start to build off into this app. And if it does a good job here, it will probably create a dedicated auth page for people to sign in and sign out that gates whether or not someone is part of this app. So again, let's take a look and see what it did. All right, there we go. So now we have a sign-in page. Let's see if we go ahead and sign up and create an account. Let's test it out with uh, my email here. Let's actually, if I try to add just like a bad password, right? This is good. It honestly just didn't even have to tell it to do this. It just knew if I'm building an auth page, it should have an error if you don't have a good password. So there we go. I'm gonna give it a better password. We'll sign up and it looks like I have to go to my email to confirm my account. Again, this is built into the app automatically. I didn't have to do this. So I'm gonna go confirm and then let's come right back. Now, again, I've got a couple issues here, right? Like it let me in after not actually signing me up. It looks like it's got a non, not a real number percentage thing here. Um, again, you've already seen the, the process, but the way to fix this is to just keep on attempting fixes. If Bolt gets stuck, you can always come back and say, hey, like go backwards, make sure it works. There is a little bit of this back and forth, which can be annoying or time consuming, but again, putting into the context of the alternative, which is actually writing all the code for this, it is still mind blowingly cool. I'll work with this a little bit. We'll get this back to a working state and there we go. So that literally just took another prompt or two. And now this is all cleaned up. You can see I'm signed in as a user. And as I click and mark these as done, if I refresh the page, they stay marked as done. It is a full blown app. I cannot stress this enough. This is ridiculous. Like this is just absolutely crazy bolt. Now, once I've hooked this all up, what you'll notice is that because it's being saved into our database, if we go into the table editor here in Superbase, you can see the essays. You can also see user readings, right? And so as I mark things as checked or as I add new essays, they exist in Superbase. Now to build this out for my actual app, right? PG Reader, there are 226 essays. And so going through Superbase and adding them sort of one by one with this insert row function would have taken me forever. And instead what I wanted to do was manage all of this in Airtable, right? Airtable is a no code tool that acts like a database, but is just a much, much simpler interface. And you can kind of bulk update all of these really, really quickly. So in order to make this production ready and actually have all of PG essays in a single place, what I did is I hooked up my app from bolt.new to Airtable using WhaleSync. So WhaleSync is our product. Basically what it does is it two-way syncs tools. And you can see here the setup that I have. Basically it's a really simple two-way sync between my Superbase database and an Airtable, right? So all it's doing is just taking the columns that are in this Superbase database and syncing them up with Airtable 2A. So as I create new rows in this Airtable, it syncs into my Superbase database as I update them and vice versa, right? Now I have basically a front end panel that's no code that lets me edit and update my database. So let's review really quickly what we've done so far. We used bolt.new to create a functioning front end that showed a list of essays. We then connected that with Bolt to Superbase to have an actual backend that would save the progress and save all our essays in one place. We then asked Bolt to connect auth so users could actually create accounts and sign in. And finally, what we've done is connected our database to Airtable using WhaleSync so that you can actually update and edit the database from an Airtable spreadsheet. The last step that I'll show you here is deploying this live. So all of this is within this sort of Bolt a uh, little playground here. To get this to actually be a real app, we need it to live on the internet. Now, one way you can do that if you are a developer is just export it and do this however you would normally. Um, but for the no coders out there, you can literally just hit deploy. And again, the magic of Bolt takes over where it's going to initiate a deployment process on something called Netlify, where this will be hosted for you. So literally just like this, there we go, your site's been successfully deployed. We can click this. 
And now this is a real link. Like you can go here, you can send this to your friends. They can sign up for your full blown app. And in you know, 15, 20 minutes, you can go from idea to something that actually works, that you can share, that you can profit from. Uh, it is just absolutely crazy. Now, Netlify, without going into too many details there, lets you claim a website like this just by clicking this button. And then if you want to pay them, you can actually put that at your own domain. So if you want to buy a domain for you know 10 bucks or whatever, you can turn this into something like that or for free, just host it under the .netlify.app. So all in all, where does this leave us? Uh, as you can probably tell from this video, Bolt is mind blowing. Uh, I've never seen an AI tool that can do this much. Uh, it's certainly not perfect and it will run into some issues and errors, right? This time it actually was pretty good about fixing its own problems. I've had other instances where I was building an app and sort of halfway through it just kind of conked out. Uh, it didn't know how to fix itself. It got stuck in a bug. And if you're not technical, uh, that can really stink because you're kind of left high and dry. Uh, if you are a developer, also no problem. Like you can take this out, export it, update it yourself. Um, but if you're a no coder and operator, uh, just beware that like this is probably a year or two away from being like, truly, truly at the point where it can do anything. But uh, despite that, it often is able to fix its own issues and basically come up with ideas on its own, right? And so like we didn't tell it, hey, use purple here, use purple there, or, you know, come up with this add to reading list button. Like it, it had these ideas on its own. You didn't need to tell it that when it's having a link here, like to a website to include this little link out icon, right? Or to show the date of the essay below it. Like those are great ideas that uh, Bolt just came up with on its own. So all in all, the way I would think about this app is as sort of a co-creator, right? This is sort of a development team and designer in a box where you can chat with it, it can fix its own problems, it can come up with ideas, and just know that sometimes it's a little thick-headed and will just not understand what you're saying, but uh, I only expect it to get better and better. So I hope you found that demo useful. If there are any other things that you wanna know about Bolt, AI, building with any of these tools, always feel free to reach out or leave us a comment below. We're super excited about this product as well as some of the other ones in the space and hope you enjoy.